The allure of Granada is comparable to that of any other Caribbean island. Grand Anse beaches gentle sands lure sunbathers, while the area's abundant diving options entice those who would rather spend the day beneath the water. You'll quickly learn though that Granada is not your typical Caribbean vacation destination. Once you arrive in St. George's or on the tiny islands of Cariacao and Petite Martinique. Try some rum punch at the River Antoine Rum Distillery and take a tour of a spice farm to really appreciate this unique location. Watch to find out from which of these locations you can begin your Caribbean trip. Number 1. St. George's Many visitors who have strolled St. George's winding streets have commented that it feels nearly like strolling through an oil painting. The vibrant, brilliantly painted homes give off a colonial vibe. In reality, the southwestern shore of Granada Island is home to the capital city of Granada, which holds the unofficial distinction of being the Caribbean region's most picturesque harbor town. Spend an hour or two exploring the Carinage, St. George's Marina, where you'll discover a variety of eateries offering up regional fare with a side of breathtaking views. But this city is much more than its picture-perfect exterior. A fantastic spot to receive a quick introduction to Grenadian culture is St. George's. Visit Fort Frederick and Fort George to learn about local history and the colonial area on the island. Number 2. Grand Anse Beach Of Granada's 45 beaches, Grand Anse is sometimes referred to as the Grand Daddy. But that's an understatement. This two-mile stretch of creamy white sand looks out over a protected azure-colored bay where brightly colored fishing boats in red and yellow pop out. The picture-perfect setting is surrounded by numerous hotels, eateries, and retail establishments making it an ideal home base for tourists looking for the sun. Recent tourists praise the beach, although they do caution against enjoying days in the sun due to the pushy sales tactics of local vendors. Grand Anse Beach is about six miles south of St. George's on the southwest coast of Granada Island, so just politely say no thank you unless you genuinely want to buy something. You can reach the beach by car, minibus, or water taxi, you're welcome to explore the beach at any time, day or night, and the sands are free of charge. Number 3. Grand Atang National Park and Forest Reserve When you feel tired of lying on the beach for too long, take a walk along one of Grand Atang's National Park and Forest Reserve's hiking routes to stretch your legs. Grand Atang is a vast area in central Granada Island that is home to a variety of unusual animals. Armadillos, Mona monkeys, and tropical mockingbirds live there permanently. As you tour well-known locations like Mount Kwakwa, which is renowned for its breathtaking views of the park, and the lovely Grand Atang Lake, you're bound to come across these wonderful species and more. We've seen plenty of gorgeous beaches in the Caribbean and South Pacific, but strolling down a rainforest loaded with the scent of fresh spices was absolutely fantastic as one TripAdvisor user puts it. One of the most popular hikes leads to Seven Sisters Falls, located about 1.25 miles north of the Grand Itang Visitor Center. Visitors describe both the trail and the falls as particularly scenic. However, many warn that the trail can be challenging, so bring sturdy footwear and plenty of stamina. Number 4. River Antoine Rum Distillery Make your way to the River Antoine Rum Distillery whenever your mouth starts to water for a taste of the local beverage. Since 1785, River Antoine has been producing bottles of rum, making it the Caribbean's oldest operating water power distillery. You may take guided tours that take you through every step of rum production, from sugarcane harvesting to fermentation to bottling. You'll receive a complimentary sample of the liquor following the tour, but be forewarned, this isn't your typical booze. One TripAdvisor user claims they brew a rum so potent that it cannot be transported home on an airline. Should you want to bring some home, a less potent version is available for purchase. You'll find the River Antoine Rum Distillery on the northeast coast of Granada Island near Lake Antoine, roughly an hour's drive from St. George's. Tours are offered Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for $2. Number 5. Diving Spots 
You're losing out on some genuinely breathtaking landscapes if you spend your Granada vacation above rather than below the surface. Off the coastlines of Granada Island, Cariacao, and Petite Martinique are more than 30 diving sites including coral reefs and shipwrecks. The Bianca Sea Shipwreck, one of the most well-known dive sites, is located close to Cariacao's coastline. Due to her enormous size, the cruise ship Bianca Sea which sank in 1961, was given the moniker Titanic of the Caribbean. A more colorful dive is provided by the vibrant coral and a wealth of marine life in Flamingo Bay. Divers who are experienced consider going to the underwater sculpture park for a distinctive underwater experience. The underwater sculpture park's underwater art installation, which represents scenes from Grenadian culture and folklore, is located at the bottom of Moliniere Bay in St. George's. One TripAdvisor user claims that the park's famous Ring of Children is a terrific place to get shocked at discovering something new underwater, despite the fact that some divers find it to be a little eerie. Number 6. Belmont Estate and the Granada Chocolate Company for tourists curious to discover Granada's diverse flavors, the Belmont Estate is only one of the island country's numerous and well-liked spice tours. This 300-year-old plantation is an expert in spices like nutmeg, ginger, pimento, and turmeric. Visit the 400-acre estate's gardens, museum, and goat milk dairy in addition to seeing how these spices are produced while there. You can also stop by the Belmont Estate restaurant for a bite to eat when the wonderful fragrances start to make your stomach growl. You can visit the Granada Chocolate Company's factory while you're there and enjoy a tour. The organic chocolate bars produced at this small cocoa processing facility are exported all around the world. From breaking open the cocoa beans to pouring and sculpting the smooth chocolate, Recent visitors liked the free samples provided by the factory and recommended purchasing sweets from the gift store. On the northeastern side of Granada Island, about an hour's drive from St. George's, are the Belmont Estate and the Granada Chocolate Company. Make sure you have directions before you go because recent visitors commented that the place can be tricky to find. Number seven, Granada's Market Square. You can't go wrong with a trip to Market Square for souvenir purchasing. Market Square, which is in the center of St. George's, welcomes both tourists and residents shopping for handcrafted goods, seasonal produce, and of course, spices. The spice market is described as having the greatest scent of any market I have ever visited to by one TripAdvisor user. However, several recent visitors caution that the vendors can be aggressive. At the end of Young Street is Market Square. The busiest days to visit are weekends, especially on Saturdays, when the market is busier than usual. Number 8. La Sagesse Nature Center La Sagesse Nature Center is located on the southwest coast of Granada Island, about 25 minutes drive from Grand Anse and St. George's La Sagesse. A historic plantation tucked beside a secluded estuary will enchant nature enthusiasts. Just remember to pack your binoculars. La Sagesse Nature Center boasts some of the island's best bird watching, according to the Granada Tourism Board. The Caribbean coot, the green-backed heron, and the northern jacana are just a few of the rare species found in this area. If you're not a fan of birds, La Sagesse also has a lovely beach, lots of hiking paths, a tiny hotel, and a delectable restaurant. Number nine, Carry a cow and petite. Escape to carry a cow and petite Martinique when you're done exploring Granada Island. The two islets of carry a cow and petite Martinique, which are north of the main island, are much less touristic than Granada Island. In fact, you shouldn't be astonished if you never run into another traveler. The larger of the two islands, carry a cow has a number of modest lodging options, dining establishments, and even a local museum. With celebrations like the Cariacau Carnival and the Cariacau Regatta showcasing regional music and the island's relationship to the sea, Cariacau is also an excellent site to discover Grenadian culture. Petite Martinique, meantime, is as close to a desert island getaway as you'll ever want to go. This tiny island just a few miles from Cariacau's northeast shore doesn't have much in the way of lodging and dining. 
but what it lacks in amenities and makes up for in beautiful beaches. And number 10, Spice Plantation Tour. Those Granada tastes at the Belmont Estate weren't enough for you? Then make a reservation for Travel Granada Spice Plantation Tour. You can take these four to five hour excursions to reach Goyave, a charming maritime village where you can see the neighborhood spice plant and nutmeg processing facility. Once visiting the Belvedere Plantation in the mountains, where you can try a fresh Grenadian banana, the tour continues. Additionally, you may go on a hike at Grand Atang National Park before taking a dip in Concord Falls to cool off. Granada continues to charm you with its classic Caribbean beauty. Beautiful beaches are bordered by frangipani and other flamboyant trees, and there are lushly covered mountains, rainforests, plantations, and colorful seaside communities that make for excellent photo opportunities. Which of these places do you want to visit first? Also, check out this other video if you want to visit Honduras. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more of our top 10 prime picks.